Hi, Nick McQuaid here again for, with the third of four videos for day three of ISTE 780 Data Driven Knowledge Discovery. And uh, in this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about classification and uh, the classification setting. So, this is section 2.2.3, and here are the terms that we're going to need to master in this section indicator variables, the error rates, both training and test error rate, the Bayes classifier the notion of conditional probability, the Bayes decision boundary, the Bayes error rate, and uh, the k-nearest neighbors approach, which is typically abbreviated KNN. And then in the fourth um, and final video, we'll deal with uh, exercise 2.4.9. So let's begin. So the classification setting, let's remind ourselves uh, what the classification setting is all about. So the classification setting differs a little bit from the regression setting. In the regression setting, why? is a quantitative variable, and in the classification setting, y is a qualitative variable. That means we can choose some category for y to fall into. Uh, yes or no, in or out, up or down, something like that. Uh, but we can't say that uh, y is 1.5 or 1.6 or 1.7 <coughs> and establish a nice uh, metric for, for a distance between those things. And, and recall that our x variables, variable or variables, the, um, of which there are p of them, uh, can be either qualitative or quantitative. We're not so concerned about that because we can encode uh, qualitative variables. And in fact, that's what we're going to do with y. We're going to, to uh, encode it in a sense. So what we're going to do is use something called an indicator variable. So let's take a quick look at that. Uh, an indicator variable. Um, is a variable that takes on a value of 1 in some situation and a value of 0 in some other situation. So that's that's basically what an indicator variable is. What I've highlighted here is the indicator variable that we're going to use in something called the uh, error rate. And the idea of this, this indicator variable is that it's 1 if what we observe is not, this is what we observe, is not the same thing that we expected to observe, and zero if what we observe is the same thing that we expected to observe. So this is an error rate that gets bigger the more errors we make. Each time we make an error, we add a one. Each time we don't make an error, we add a zero. So this number here, this is the error rate. This is called the training error rate. And this number right here will will develop will sum, so this symbol here means we're going to sum for all n, so if we have 200 observations, we're going to have 200 opportunities to add a 1, and we would have 200 in the denominator here, so if we were wrong all the time, the result would be 200 divided by 200, or 1. If we were right every single time, this would always be 0, the result would be 0 over 200, or 0. So this is a rate in the sense it varies between 0 and 1. So no matter how many observations we have, we're always going to have an error rate, a training error rate that is between 0 and 1. Now, how do we classify whether um, y is uh, yes or no, or up or down, or in or out, or something like that? Well, what we would like to do is classify, in order to minimize this error rate, in fact, here's, this is another of the, these math things that uh, can be shown, but we're not going to show you. Uh, or you're not going to have to show us, I should say, it can be shown that um, we can minimize the training rate if we assign each observation to the most likely class given its predictor values. And this is a mathematical expression to uh, encapsulate that notion. The probability that y is equal to j given, that's this vertical bar means given, given that x is equal to some uh, vector x naught. So all the predictor variables are in some configuration. And what is most likely given that the predictor variables are in that configuration? That's, that's the gold standard. Um, and this is, in general, this kind of expression is a conditional probability expression. And if you've been exposed to Bayes' rule, you know all about conditional probability expressions. So this is a probability that ranges from 0 to 1. Well, it should range from 0 to 1 um, in, 
in reality. Uh, sometimes there are, are little mathematical issues that cause that uh, may cause us to come up with a number that's larger than one or less than zero, but those are impossible in the real world. So this is a conditional probability, and this expression is called the Bayes classifier, and this is kind of the gold standard. If only we knew this information, we could always classify, or we, we, uh, we would have our, the best chance of classifying. It. The probability wouldn't be necessarily one. Um, and I'll, I'll, I can show you why using a little uh, picture here in just a minute. The probability is, um, is, ma is um, the, the rate is minimized if we uh, choose whatever has the highest probability here. I guess that's a little counterintuitive. Um, okay, so let's take a look at, an, at a picture Oh, and he, okay, so here's a picture where we know this gold standard. I mean, the gold standard is, is the, the Bayes classifier, and the Bayes classifier results in a decision boundary. This, is, this particular example has two possible classes, and this, the two classes are the blue class and the orange class. And um, because this is a simulated data set, we know which uh, class each belongs to. And so we can compute the, the Bayes decision boundary because we know exactly what the probability is uh, that each, uh, we, by assigning each one to its most likely class, we, we know where the Bayes decision boundary is. And because there is some noise in the data, you can see that the Bayes decision boundary doesn't yield a perfect decision. So this is the best decision that we can possibly get, but it's not a perfect decision. Okay, because there is there are, are some confounds here. It's not possible to come up with a classifier that is going to sort of reach into the uh, the blue world and pick out the the uh, the orange circles, or reach into the orange world and just pick out the the blue circles. The the most likely. So some of these are simply uh, unlikely. So some of the things that happen are very unlikely. And um, the decision rule that picks the most likely uh, is the best that, that we could possibly come up with. I think, I feel like I'm repeating myself here, but that's, this is a kind of a fundamental and abstract concept that's important for you to, uh, to think about. Okay, so anyway, so that's the Bayes classifier. So if we knew that, if we knew in advance what everything belonged to, we could compute this. And so we can use this. So unfortunately, we can't use this to, to make our predictions, but we can use this to assess our predictions. This is, this is the best that can be done. So we can compare other things to this um, best that can be done. Okay, and then here's the Bayes error rate. So this is this is the error rate, which will not be uh, necessarily zero if you have a situation like this. Now we have seen, and I guess I can go back to it. Let's, let me just say I'm going to view a split PDF here, and I can go back to one of our our previous. We we had a previous example here, which I didn't think I was going to. I show. You should get used to. Yeah. Okay. So this is it. Um, here's an example where the Bayes decision boundary probably would really be great. You know, we probably we could probably get um, the the Bayes error rate down to around zero. We couldn't do it on this data set here. There's no way we could get the Bayes decision rate down to, to zero. It's the most likely thing for this circle to be is a plus. That's is just too bad. It's just that that's just reality. And in fact, the textbook tells us that this is analogous to the uh, irreducible error. So we want to make this as low as possible. And if we do know, if we know, if we have a, a test data set already, then we know what this is. 
you know, in, after the fact, we, we can always predict last week's stock prices. You know, that's, that's a, a, a given. And in this case, the, the case of this data here, the Bayes error rate is computed here in the textbook as, one, as 0.13, so a 13% uh, error rate. So that is, um, yeah, see in here is where they say that it's uh, analogous to irreducible error. So that's the gold standard, and we would love to be able to, to do that. We can't do that in real life. We can't, we can't know in advance um, what the, uh, the probability uh, is. So we would like to find techniques that are pretty good at that. And here's a technique that's pretty good at that, the K-nearest neighbor technique. And it's best described with a little picture here. So the K-nearest neighbor technique is any time that we would like, any, suppose we have a bunch of training examples. Let's just concentrate on this one picture right here. Suppose we have a bunch of training examples represented by the blue and orange circles. And we now have a test observation represented by the X. <clears throat> and we would like to know which uh, world th this X is in. Is it a blue circle or an orange circle? So uh, K is a number, by the way. K is a positive integer. And we would like to, t to choose some K and then check that many neighbors of X. And in this case, uh, what's been chosen is 3. K equals 3. So we're checking the three nearest neighbors. So we simply sweep a radius out from X until we hit three neighbors. And here's the point at which we've hit the third. This is the, the third closest point, I, I guess. This is the closest point, second closest point, and the third closest point. And once we've hit these three neighbors, we now have a probability that uh, is two thirds that that uh, x is a blue circle. So we're going. So the k nearest neighbor algorithm would choose blue uh, blue circle as the um, as the uh, assignment for this x. That's what what this I should say this cross. It's this is not an x. But remember, we're all we always use the the terms x and y to refer to. Um, to refer to inputs and outputs. This is, we'll, we'll call this a cross, and uh, these are circles, okay? So um, sweeping out from this cross, we find that the, the k nearest neighbors, if k equals three, the k nearest neighbors tell us that this is a blue circle. Now, um, we can generalize this in this space here, and we can say which regions, obviously, um, if there were a cross in this region here, um, the, the three nearest neighbors would predict it to be orange. Over here, it's not quite so obvious. I guess way over here, it's probably going to be um, predict blue. And uh, over here, it's going to predict orange. Over here, uh, probably blue. So we can establish a decision boundary like the Bayes decision boundary. And this is the K and N decision boundary. And, that, and that's what this... Um, these regions are the decision boundary here tells us that if uh, we were to put a cross in any of these locations we would um, the the KNN classifier would call it orange and if we were to put it anywhere in any of these um, the KNN classifier would call it blue a blue circle and um, because this is simulated data we can know how good a job um, KNN did on this data? How we can know how how good this uh, particular these particular choices were, and uh, I think somewhere quite uh, close to here we will find that in this yet yeah, oh no that's figure two sixteen uh, somewhere here it is uh, yeah the test error rate using KNN is very close to the Bayes error rate, 13%, slightly higher, 13.6%, slightly higher than the Bayes error rate of about 13%. So KNN is really good. It's very simplistic. The algorithm is very simplistic, and there's not really a good explanation for it. You know, there's not really any kind of, of uh, um, inference behind K nearest neighbors. It's a, a very... Um, flexible approach and it can be it can be made much more flexible by choosing a larger value 
of uh, k. In fact, it can become uh, ridiculously flexible by choosing a larger or smaller value of, of k. So let's take a look at, uh, I should say, it becomes more flexible with a smaller value of k. Sorry, not, not a larger value. Here, we'll look at some pictures. Um, here's the KNN decision uh, boundary and the Bayes decision boundary. And you can see using K equals 10 uh, on the picture that we first looked at to learn about the, uh, the Bayes decision boundary. So the um, Bayes decision boundary is shown here as this purple dashed line. The um, black line is the KNN decision boundary. And they're amazingly close together. And the, the uh, error rates are, are quite similar. The error, the error, the error rate for KNN comes very close to the optimal error rate. It's al almost as good as the KNN rate. On the other hand, let's suppose that we use different values of k. So here's a case where we use uh, k equals 1, and the boundary is overly flexible. And here we use k equals 100, and the, the boundary is not sufficiently flexible. And in both cases, we have this, these are the same. This is the same simulated data that we saw earlier. So in both cases, we have, we see the the optimal boundary shown here um, as a purple dashed line. And you can see that although this is too flexible, it's um, it's a better approximation of reality than than this is than the, the inflexible one is. And here is our sort of by now hopefully familiar uh, picture of the problem where the more, uh, and, and this depends, uh, of course, on um, the inherent variability, um, the variance of epsilon. But the, if the variance of epsilon is sufficiently high, then we get this situation where um, the as, as we approach k equals 1, so this is uh, one. This is actually 1 over k. So if k is quite large, um, so as k, as k approaches 1, it gets more and more flexible. So if k is very large, it's not so flexible. The uh, error rate is high. We can reduce the error rate for the training set, and we can continue to reduce the error rate for the training data, but if there is this variability, if there is this, this noise, then what's going to happen is the same thing that we saw happen in the regression setting, that the test data is going to be farther and farther away. The, the training data is going to be less. The more flexible we are, the, the less the training data is going to resemble the test data. Okay, and then that's that's pretty much it for um, the classification setting. That's that's the, those are the the main points. I think this is a little bit deeper than the regression setting, and um, it it probably merits more study. And let me remind you that I'm expecting that you're reading the book, and that I'm just giving you the highlights in the lecture. Obviously, the the most um, giving you the most detail would mean you know reading the book to you. Um, so I'm, I'm just sort of hitting the high points, and you still need to read the book, and you still need to uh, try to particularly understand the concept of conditional probability. I think if we, if we take a look at the, um, the issues here, the issue of, of uh, conditional probability and um, the issue of flexibility in uh, a technique that we can use, like k-nearest neighbors, we're going to we're going to re um, revisit k-nearest neighbors throughout the whole semester because it is such a, a valuable technique. And um, in, in, the case, in this case, the, the choice of K is, is really important. And of course, the, the problem setting is really important. Okay, so that's it for this. The last video for today will be on uh, exercise 2.4.9. Thanks for your attention.